Residual stress is a parameter commonly used to optimize the performance of products all around us. The stiffness of springs is dependent not only on the metal alloy that is used, but also in the way in which the spring is processed. The steel employed in bridges is frequently pretensioned to withstand cracking when exposed to repetitive loads. Even the decorative metallic coating on a faucet must be carefully engineered with compressive stress to prevent delamination during repeated thermal cycling. But what exactly is stress and how can it be measured? Stress is the amount of force per unit area applied to a material. The subsequent deformation in the material is referred to as strain. This effect is often studied by stretching a metal and measuring the effect between stress and strain. When a load is first applied, the relationship between stress and strain is linear. This occurs as a result of the stretching of atomic bonds. Once the load is released, most materials will return to their original shape. This is called elastic deformation. If the material is stretched even further, the yield strength is reached and the atomic bonds will begin to break, forming defects in the crystal structure called dislocations. Once yield strength is reached, much more force is required to deform the material any further. This is referred to as work hardening. If the stress is removed after dislocations are formed, it will not return to its original shape. This region is called plastic deformation. If the material is further stretched, dislocations will continue to form, eventually leading to fracture. One of the most common ways to measure residual stress is with X-ray diffraction. X-ray diffraction is a technique that uses high energy light to measure the distance between atoms in a specific direction of the sample. From the atomic distances, strain that is stored in the crystal structure can be calculated and converted into residual stress. The atomic distance in the plane of the sample must be extrapolated from measurements at several tilts relative to the surface, an angle called psi. When the strain is plotted versus the sine squared psi, the slope of the line indicates the amount of stress in the sample. The larger the slope, the more residual stress in the sample. In a stress-free material, the atomic spacing D will be the same in all directions. The sine squared psi plot shows a horizontal line at zero. In the case of a tensile in-plane stress, the D spacings pointing in the plane of the sample will be larger than the stress-free D spacing. The Poisson effect results in the D spacing pointing out of the sample surface to be less than the stress-free D spacing. In this case, the sine squared psi plot shows a line with a positive slope. A compressive stress in the plane of the sample surface occurs when the D spacings in the plane are smaller than the stress-free D spacing. As before, the Poisson effect will induce a change in the surface normal direction, causing an expansion in the atomic spacing. In this case, the sine squared psi plot shows a negative slope. By having the ability to measure residual stress in a quick manner, simple adjustments to the way in which materials are processed can change a dangerous tensile stress into a beneficial compressive condition. As materials are pushed further and further in the loads that they must bear, Understanding the residual stress present in a material is essential in the periodic maintenance and failure analysis of components.